Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you And welcome back to the Beat Up Plan towards our last episode within the Jewish Gem Campaign series. As you may note, some changes have happened. Certainly a few years have passed. In the end, the game was just fast enough to kind of cockblock me, and this lady was, unfortunately, married out to this guy. The fact that I give her a gift does not matter. The fact that you... I can ask her for a favor for 650 gold or 680, she would accept it. She won't come because she's married to this good dude, and this dude is then the son of this one, and then doesn't work anymore. In, in other terms... And I've said this before, favors don't really work very nicely within outside of the realm, despite the fact that they should give you more options to get people to join your court. Nonetheless, that didn't happen, but I did find in the end, for my son, a very good wife. It's from our own family line, of course, who is ambitious and is strong, and has claims to Mesopotamia and Georgia. Hmm. Alright, that will definitely do. In fact, the Queen of Mesopotamia has managed to actually kill the Raiput Band, so even the toughest enemy there was for my vassals has been taken down. Not only that, as you may notice, I actually did win that war against Antitoch. Uh, is that still visible? No, that's weird. Hmm. Hold on there, history, you! I'll definitely be- Oh, that's why we of course are no longer- Right, right. I won from her, as you may be able to see here, I can do that in another another fashion of course. Antitoch, history. I uh, granted and was conquered as a claimant. Yes indeed, I conquered it for him in 981. I kinda won because I turned my uh, armies back and beat the crap out of the armies and just got 100% over here and she surrendered. Despite the fact that she had way more land that I did not take note of. Which we have inherited. Which is all of this. This is now also all Abyssinia. Although this man is currently in revolt. Um, well, that's not something I'm really going to take note of. But yes, this now is also Abyssinia. As we took the Antitoch Duchy. But we have even more good news. This is now a Jewish empire, because he managed to create the kingdom title of Asturias. Uh, I don't know exactly who conquered what at what moment, but it was enough for him to create a second Jewish empire. Well, that's such a high note to end on, and I'm very happy. I have a good heir. Definitely. He has a good wife in his future. My vassals are beating the crap out of enemies because, well, as you may be able to note, <laughs> there are more and more encroaching on this man. Um, we delivered a deadly blow to the Byzantine Empire. We got all of this right now thanks to the Antitoch Duchy. Didn't even realize that that would happen. They have all fallen apart over here because, well, I made sure that they. Um, actually, the, this is of Bohemia. I'm sorry. But. They did lose some vassals because I've broken their rebellion and thus also the Byzantine Empire has been destroyed. And this this war over here of the Holy Roman Revolt, it was created in 72. It's already waging for more than 10 years and currently, uh, that's the Pia Bomo um, revolt, sorry here, 90% in favor of Pandorov the Tenacious. Yeah, um, in short, this is not moving very far. And thus, oh, the strongest, or the second strongest empire is now also really in trouble. And if you don't believe me, let me just show you here. Um, all vassals and realm, your court, independent states, realm size. Abyssinia by far, oh actually, uh, yeah, no, of course, because the Holy Roman uh, Revolt and the Holy Roman Empire need to be Calculate together if you want to have the total score. That is the second one. And then comes the Byzantine Empire, but very closely fo followed by Hispania. So, I am more than pleased with what we've done. We actually did manage to spread the Jewish face just a little bit further. Not incredibly much, but we did do it. Uh, and also up here, there is now Jewish people. So, we did manage to create 
from the very get-go of our family as a lowly place down here in Simeon. That was where our dynasty started. Um, I want to say, is that correct? I'm starting to have my doubts. Hmm. Hold on there. Just a minute. Going back. This was our first guy. Phineas the Wise. King of Nubium. We managed to indeed for us to go west. That's now I remember. And we had Samian. We did have Samian. So it was this area. Why in the heck is that? Oh, it is. I'm looking at the last one. Not at the first one. Duh. Sorry, folks. So yes, we started at Phineas the Wise. And we used that age-old trick of sneaky, sneaky acting and saying that we were a Sunni when we actually weren't, despite the fact that these two men died as Sunni, they were secretly Jewish. And on, under them we joined the Arabian Empire, and from inside out we conquered up uh, further and further and further. From Phineas the Wise we went to Sultan Gideon the One, the Lawgiver. He didn't really expand his realm too much according to these settings. I have to see how actually long he actually even ruled. Uh, oh, he only ruled for 14 years, so that's probably a major part of it. Then we came Tekka the Just, who also doesn't seem to have gained any lands literally like this, but I do think there is a lot more. Let us see in the Chronicles. Can we find that out? Because the Chronicles for once, actually, Prince F King Phineas actually is from the very get-go. Correct. It doesn't blow up this time, so... Hurrah! Well, let's see if we can find King Tekka the Just. Uh, Nubia died on affected wound. His son Gideon. And there's his son Gideon. Interestingly enough, Gideon is here shown as Sunni. But here he is given as Jewish. Notice that? Interestingly enough. Uh, and here he is given as Jewish. So you can see that on a certain point we switched. Um. Yeah, Sultan Gideon of Nubia converted to Jewish, there it is. And then we played on and on and on, and then on Tekka we con we went further. Also started out as Sunni very shortly, but we became Jewish once again. And in the end, after a, a small little line of Tekka the Just, and Gideon the Second of Nubia, who didn't even give him a special title, um, we came and became the Emperor Negus the Usurper of Abyssinia. Because, oh yeah, that's it. We always held Nubia, of course. We never created Abyssinia. Because it gives problems. I should have realized myself I was actually smart. But we went and conquered all the way up here into Egypt as it became independent of the Arabian Empire. We smacked it down, conquered it, and then we went on. Here is Gideon the Holy. Uh, creating Oka, recreating Israel. And by the way, of course... Negus created the third temple, not to forget. Great man. Then we had Amara Ironside, under which we conquered further and further and all more. And then we come to Yazu the Holy. We have usurped all of the Arabian Empire, and we could actually. Oh, we can also create a Tachitite of Crimea. And as Az Azov, of course. Did you realize? But we could create the Arabian Empire. The Arabian Empire, it's being currently just worked into our. Abyssinian Empire. After all, Syria, we can't. We missed just one county. And here, we don't have everything of Mauritania, but we are spreading quite far. Don't forget, though, we are also putting in Mesopotamia. We have parts of uh, the Byzantine Empire. We have parts of the Persian Empire. I think we have, like, a ton of the Persian Empire, even. So just, let me just check that out for a moment. Uh, how much of the Persian Empire do we hold? We hold... That's the kingdom. I meant the empire. We currently hold 66% of the Persian Empire as well. So we are definitely a major power to hold, to uh, to take into account. And you can see that from the independent realms. And if we move to tab 4 and we look at the moral authority of the faiths, it's Hindu, Jewish and Catholicism. Followed quite uh, shortly afterwards by Orthodox. So, we established Jewish as a powerful religion and realm, and we did the Gideon Challenge. 
Uh, I do like it, but unfortunately I'm running into the fact of Ganolf. Well, nobody can stop us. Mm, there's not much news to go around. We even beat the Selshuk invasion. And when the Mog Mongolians come, I'm sure I will be getting further, because if more of these lovely revolts happen, then we can definitely destroy the Byzantine Empire even further. But I have no desire to do so. I have a desire to show you something else, something new. And I hope I will see you there. We are leaving behind Abyssinia in the good faith, knowing that the Jewish faith is not only present here in Arabia, but also in Spain. More or less, we just took over the entire Sunni world and made it Jewish. Once I made Jew Sunni the great religion, this time I made Jewish the, the great religion. Or, of course, we can also have a look at other series I've done, like Zoroastrian and what have you not. When I will come back to CK2, and you know I will, I will probably try out yet another mod. It's been a while. I did play the Total Conversion mod that uh, um, made it so that we would be playing in the world of Fire and Ice, also perhaps better known as the world of the Game of Thrones. We have used CK2+, plus. we have done CK2 in space, but there are even more Total Conversion mods, and what have you not, that we can use and could delve into. So, look forward to that, but perhaps you're all looking forward even furthermore to the next upcoming series, which would be Suck You Be in Space. And no, we're not using... We're not using CK2 for that, but we're using Stellaris for that. If that title is something that appeals to you, and I'm certain that some people of you are hot-blooded people out there are quite interested in that title, do please check it out. And if you liked this series, do let me know in the comments. And if you did not enjoy that I am leaving it on this note, do also let me know. Because I don't know what you like to see if you do not tell me what you like to see. I am not a psychic. But I believe that hereby I have reached the end of the exciting times of Abyssinia. I'm starting to rant, as I always tend to do in this last episode. So... All I have left to say is, I thank you for watching, and remember, great peril yields great beauty.